This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on them soon. Hey guys, Ron here, and once again I brought together three other artists, gave them a prompt, and we all had to create some Pokemon that embodied the description I gave them, which was Oxymoron. An oxymoron is a phrase that contains two opposites or contradictions, like bittersweet or alone together. Our job was to create Fakemon that embody contrasting elements or showcase a pair of opposites. And now we're finally going to showcase our Fakemon to you guys and each other. Let me introduce these amazing artists. Once again, Harry Gold is here to show off his massive talent. Bilsu, the creator of a Zelda-based Pokemon region, makes a fantastical appearance, and rising star Cup of Fee is gracing us with her presence. Now let's finally see the results. But before that, consider leaving a like if you enjoy so I know to make a part 12. And check out my Pokemon art playlist, which has tons of videos like this one where I create new Pokemon. So for anybody new, we have two rounds, so hopefully nobody made more than two Pokemon, right? <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you, Ron. Phoebe, you're going first. Woo! So, the first thing I did was I googled Oxymoron, um, <laughs> which is a fantastic start, uh, and it gave me a list, and I just picked a bunch from the list, and then I just whittled it down to, like, find the one that I ended up going with. And the one that I ended up on was... Oh! Whoa! <laughs> it's a little fella. It's a little fella. <laughs> the Oxymoron that I ended up choosing was Crash Landing. Oh! Um, oh nice. Yeah. After I picked Crash Landing as my first oxymoron, the first thing I knew I wanted to do was make a UFO Pokemon based off of the Lena Landing. I had a lot of difficulty getting the shape right since it's an inorganic object, so everything has to be straight and neat. But once everything was in place, I had a much easier time just adding little antenna, big eyes based off of Eve from Wally, -E, and scorch marks to sell its Crash Landing nature. Oh, I call him a Polonch. It has a name. Oh, yeah. nice names! Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's actually based off of the um, Apollo 11 spacecraft, specifically the bit that got left behind uh, on the moon. And you can find a couple of these guys all around, they've been around since like the 60s, but you can always find them in really high places because they're trying to get back to the stars where they came from, but they can't fly, so they're just like being on high buildings and mountains and stuff. This one feels like actual like, concept art for like a show or something. Hey! I like it. It's um, sort of it, it's sort of a Yoshi's Island cross Neopets. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Oh to my me. gosh! Thank you so much. It does remind me of something like Nintendo. I was going for I was going for retro, very like joystick sort of toy robot from like the seventies. Um, obviously, the little antenna because it's it is an alien. It's it's not a Earth Pokemon. It's like Deoxys or LGM or. Uh, Clefairy, Space Boy. I like the yeah. the asymmetrical antennas. It also like helps with the crash part of the landing. This could be the mascot or like the protagonist of like an indie game, easily. So many, so many lovely compliments. So thank you. I also I love any character that has like a void for a face, like a black face with like uh, bright, cute eyes. It could be a Kirby enemy too. It could be a Mario it's enemy. It could be anything. Oh, it, it does. Enemy. It does have Kirby to it, doesn't it? Yeah. I like that. Looks like the eyes would be really expressive too, like animated. Yeah, I did a little, I did a little blink. Oh, you did! Him. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> I was. Ama that's amazing. Oh that's yeah, beautiful. exactly. Just a little one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> very cute, sir. Thank it you. is very nice. Yeah, and you, you're, you are lucky that you don't have to do Sugimori style. You can just do what is natural for you. You don't have to like. That's the part of the process that I hate the most, where I just, where I just have to now mimic the Sugimori style. It's like I can do it, but it's, it's never quite right, and it's like. 95% yeah, like, there, exactly. but it's the 5% the annoys me so much that mm -hmm. I'd just rather do a completely different art style. Harry, Such a subtle that's, that's style. That's interesting, Rob, because yeah. the, doing the Sugimori style is everything. Yeah, you like it because you're right, good that at, is, at doing that's it, your thing. We're, we're all well, jealous it's, of it's, you. It's, it's, well, it's, it's my little niche obsession. You, you may know that I do sort of caricature stuff in my own on my own channel, and it's sort of, I get the same buzz from like successfully capturing a likeness of a person and going, yeah, that actually looks like them. I get the same thing from successfully capturing an art style and going, wow, that looks like it could have actually been drawn by that guy. I like honing that skill. I like getting better and better at doing Sugimori style in the grand scheme of things and noticing that I got better at it. But in that moment, it's always like at the end of the process for me because I'm designing, I'm doing the line art, doing the colors. Last hour is making it look Sugi, like Sugimori style. And by then I'm already tired. <laughs> by then I'm already done, <laughs> I'm done with this design. You checked out. So it's, like, it's always at the end of the process where I'm just least enthusiastic. Well, I mean, if anyone does want to critique my art, and I'm saying this like to the commenters as well, like there is nothing wrong with create with um, constructive criticism. Like you're not going to grow art wise if people don't point out your flaws. I mean, again, in a constructive way, you're not going to like point at someone's art and go like that's bad. It's more like 
this could be better by doing this, you know? Like, that's just how you grow as an artist. Because from a character <laughs> design standpoint, it's, yeah, it's really good. There's nothing to critique. The only thing I guess I would think of is, like, if you are already going to not do, like, Sugimori style, you also, on top of that, did, like, a design that's very unconventional for a Pokemon. So is mm. the question is, like, does it stray away from anything I've seen from a Pokemon? I don't know. I mean, the word Neopet was thrown around. As, as, <laughs> as happy as that did me. I love Neopet, so <laughs> it's not even a bad thing. Well, it wasn't a it wasn't a uh, criticism. I guess then that means we're gonna go to Bilsu, right? Yep. I took this opportunity to actually make some Pokemon for my region based on Zelda. So yes. my first oxymoron I picked was Blue Blood, which huh. actually means uh, royalty, like someone who's born into royalty. This Pokemon is actually going to be based on a Choo Choo from The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I had made this Pokemon in the past for my region, but I wanted to have a better take on it this go around. While this is a fairly simple creature and can honestly be translated seamlessly into a Pokemon, I wanted to add something extra to make it stand out on its own. I decided to go the route of Pukamuku or Pinkurchin, where it is a very small and cute single stage Pokemon. Instead of literally making the eyes of the Choo Choo the eyes of the Pokemon, I make them false eyes similar to something like Belly Bolt or the Basilisks from Dark Souls. The actual Pokemon is a very small bean that is being protected by a jelly coat which doubles as a disguise to ward off predators. Oh, oh my- oh, I know what that choo -choo. Is. <laughs> I've killed so many of its brethren. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. And what's funny about this is the reason why I went with blue blood is because, well, one, it's made out of blue, like jelly. Also, the Pokemon itself is kind of an oxymoron with the oxymoron, because if you've ever played Breath of the Wild, you know that these enemies are like really common in the game. They're the opposite mm. of royalty. <laughs> yeah, basically. It would be very popular. I feel like it's giving if Mimikyu was really into Zelda instead of Pikachu. Yeah. That this is what would happen. <laughs> One thing in my region is that uh, in Zelda there's a lot of different like forms, like elemental forms of different enemies. So I, it has some other forms too, which... I knew I knew, I knew you were going to give us forms. I could sense it. <laughs> Not on the level of uh, Moxie or anything like that, but... <laughs> I like the wavy texture on the fire one, but mm -hmm. I think I like the sort of overall fluffy kind of thing going on with the internal creature as well as mm -hmm. a little cotton tail on the back. I think it's the shape of the blue of the blue, the the texture of the red and then the lighting of the yellow. They all Yay. have good and separate qualities. Except for one of them. One of them I hate. <laughs> oh no. You'll never know which one. <laughs> what does jelly coat do? Um so it's kinda like ice face in a way. Oh. From, um gets hit with a physical move and it's outer shell busts. Yeah. And Aww. they take damage, but if it's one of the variants though, the it'll apply a status condition. Oh, that ooh, that makes cool. a lot of sense. <laughs> Little blue blood babies. Well, to be fair, half of them are blue. It might be blue on the inside. I think you never know. Does it, is it blue on the inside? Let us know. Dabba dee, dabba die. I'm going to show Okay, I'll do I'll do it differently. I'll show you guys what the the fake one first and you tell me what you think the the oxymoron could be. A challenge. Here is Pesca Rouge. Oh my god. I don't like the way it's looking at me. Yes. I mean, <laughs> she's the inviting Pokemon. A water fairy type. <laughs> they basically, hey, I'll, I'll tell you what they do. Pesca Rouge strut on the seafloor, you know, dangling their lure to predators looking for an easy meal. Like, so she's actually attracting predators, not prey. And then when these fierce Pokemon attack, Pesca Rouge will, like, immediately kick them with their mighty bottom fin. And they, uh, then they carry their haul to their trench. And they have a vicious rivalry with Bruxish. This is based on the red-lipped Batfish. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> now that... She's uh, beautiful! That is a choice. That is a look. <laughs> so the Oxymoron is pretty ugly. Uh, yep! <laughs> I was gonna say something like that. Uh, yeah, that checks yeah, that's, out. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty ugly. That fits the bill. Turning the red-lipped batfish into something a bit more fashionable is tough because there are so many different kinds of styles, fashion, and beauty standards, and I didn't know which one suited a fish the best. The question was also, do I make it look legitimately attractive or do I make it look confident with whatever she's got? 
I went the confident route, thank God. I turned the fish's bottom fins into legs, the hairs on its chin into skirt-like frills, and even the dots on the fish became cute little beauty marks. The lips were obviously the piece de resistance, but removing the nose made the lure exposed and reminiscent of styled hair. The fish's long tail fin now looks like a long ponytail, with scales that look like ribbons, but also complement the many parts of the body that have the shape of puckered lips, like the end of the lure on its head. And now pastel colors contrast with the saturated lips. Yeah, it's still like hideous, the po fake mon, but it's also at least it's like prettier than the bat, the real batfish. Um, that is that I, is very true. I was wondering why you chosen to give the fish legs, but in hindsight, this makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> the one fish that does kind of walk on the water, on the land, on the land of the water, the, the bottom of the sea, <laughs> the, the, the land of the water. Yeah. <laughs> the land of the water. What's baffling is that your design actually looks more normal than yeah. the creature than that the real life it. animal. <laughs> yeah, that, that. you know, every now and then they get one of those kind of freakish monstrosities washes up on the beach, and everyone yeah. goes, "What the hell is it?" And then it just turns out it's like a dolphin carcass or something. But like this looks like that, but living. It actually looks right. Like it's it. all yeah. like <laughs> bent out of shape with weird proportions and a disturbing face. It's it's the nose for me. Uh, like what 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 is the little white thing and is is that the lure? That is the lure that comes out like uh, yeah. So I, oh, mine wow. is permanently out. It, it is pretty <laughs> ugly. How, how did you find this? Oh, uh, I did a top ten ugliest animals. <laughs> you think so? Uh, <laughs> it was oh yeah. It was an April Fool's video. It was top ten worst designed Pokemon. But I just showed actual real life animals that were not good looking. <laughs> <laughs> And this one was number one. Wow. <laughs> Out of the whole animal kingdom. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to make one. I think this would be somewhat popular with some people. Yeah. They'd find an audience. Yeah, I could see that. It would be more popular than Brux's shellies. Oh, yes. for sure. Easy. They would be best friends, though. They would be like Mean Girls style. Like, yeah, passive Queens aggressive. of the Fish School. It seems like this was fun to make, though. Like, trying to make a really ugly Pokemon. It's easy to make an ugly Pokemon. It's tough to make a pretty ugly Pokemon. True. It's yeah, because like, she's, she, she's not ugly. That's the thing. Like, I mean, she's she's obviously based off of something that's ugly, but like, I'm not seeing like super ugly. Yeah, because that's the ugliness is literally just the uncanniness or like the unsettlingness of it. Yeah. A walking fish that she's is a she's ugly on the inside. Yeah, she's not a good person, really. No. Kind of kind of a brutal assertion to make out about over an entire species of Pokemon. Yeah, no, this is just a specific one. This is, this is not yeah, the yeah. entire species. This is a specific picture of one of them. And she's a bitch. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, the one other inspiration. Have you guys ever played new Pokemon Snap? I am a new Pokemon Snap enjoyer. Me too. I think it's my favorite. It's my favorite spinoff. You get to see like deep, like dark underwater. And in there is a, like a walking Goliath spot. It, like it's walking on the sea floor in the like the deep. And yeah, like, and they're just like wandering around in the little samurai suits it's so scary and, and but like it makes total sense so like same just thing. in the total dark it's so good so i i can imagine pescaru is just walking alongside it in the deep and maybe like <laughs> just sparring. a submarine just on the bottom of the sea and then she just walks up she's like hey <laughs> <laughs> what is this sassy lady doing here <laughs> i think it would probably do well in battle hopefully let us know if it does because it would be really cool if this became like an actual like competitively viable Pokemon if it was real like because then everybody it was just, you would have to you'd be forced to see it <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> oh no if it was like the new Incineroar or something and everyone's oh just like God. no it's Pesca Rouge <laughs> not again <laughs> <laughs> it's Harry's turn alrighty so I think like everyone else I started by googling a list of oxymorons the one I chose was Good grief. Ah. <laughs> I don't even remember seeing that in Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god, it's him! <laughs> That's him. Dude, you, you you this is illegal. You can't just do that. <laughs> <laughs> I I know. I, this is it's it's just a goof. You know, wanted to wanted to break the ice in a lighthearted way. Oh right? my god. It was funny, I think I was gonna do the same thing too. But then I didn't have the chutzpah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's cute oh. as hell. Nice. So the oxymoron here is Jumbo Shrimp. Oh my goodness. Is he big? Uh, no, he's tiny. <laughs> but he makes a big impact. But he wants to be big. That's the uh, that's oh. the the image it put in my head wow. is this tiny itty bitty little shrimp that wants to be a big brawny tough guy. So he goes around, he picks fights with people. 
he gets squashed frequently. Uh, he's trying to be Jumbo, right? He's trying to be the big man in town. Dude, this is exactly Pokemon's uh, design philosophy in terms of every little detail, like in terms of like the pants with the stripes becoming the the, sh- the tail. See, that that is how I like to look at Pokemon, is essentially, it's a fun kind of a logic puzzle, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> when I have to take part. two yeah. ideas, is it's like, okay, I've got a shrimp. He's got to be a shrimp that fights people. How do I put those two things together in a way that's not just like, I don't know, a buff shrimp? From there, I got, you know, sort of boxing glove claws and the sort of sports shorts tail. I do enjoy trying to figure out how how these things can all piece together. I like the way you angled it, like the pose and everything, because it almost looks like it has legs. Something about the mouth in particular is just so Pokemon. Well, it, it is a very, it is that very stereotypical, the kind of the sort of numble. Mm. Yes, gen, very Gen 3 mouth. For sure. With the, like the incomplete line for the tongue. Yeah. Obviously, you should study like actual Pokemon when you're learning how to design a fake mon, but honestly, like studying how successful fake mon are done is even more important now that I think of it. Mm. So study Harry stuff if you want to learn how to do this. Well, I wouldn't complain. Crostini is also a very delicious name. Sounds like mm. something I would eat. Shiny reminds me of Wee Boxing. But before we continue, how about I introduce the very first sponsor for the Four Artists series. Only the best brands and products get the honor of being a Four Artists sponsor. And Squarespace is the best around. It's the all-in-one website platform that will help you build the most ideal website possible. Securing your very own website is incredibly important for anybody's future, no matter the career or hobby. So in order to create a beautiful website without stressing about all the complicated stuff, you'll need the tools Squarespace offers. With its Fluid Engine, you can start designing with their best-in-class website templates and customize every design detail with their easy drag and drop technology. It's the best way to create a website, believe me. Once you go drag and drop, you'll never flop. I don't know what that means, but it sounds catchy. Whether it's to showcase content of yours by hosting videos, to post your entire art portfolio, sell your products, display all your social links, schedule social media posts, and way more, you'll find that Squarespace has the tool for pretty much anything you want a website to do. My favorite aspect, other than the ability to drag and drop, uh, you know, any asset you want onto their webpage, is the fact that they took the time and effort to create short and simple tutorials online to demonstrate every single feature of theirs. So getting started isn't intimidating at all. If that finally eases your mind, then then please check out the description and go to squarespace.com slash truegreen7 to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. It'll help support this channel a great deal and will help build your future. Now it's time for Phoebe once again. Ooh, okay. <laughs> the second one that I had was based off of Mobile Home. I have a lot of difficulty making decisions. So when I was asked to pick two oxymorons, I ended up just going through a list and choosing a bunch that I thought were interesting. I whittled the list down, even sketching and naming some that didn't make the cut. I particularly love Chida and this little Tamagotchi guy I need to revisit one day, but eventually I managed to choose my two. For the oxymoron mobile home, I had the immediate idea of making a hermit crab Pokemon. Halfway through the envisioning process, I decided to give it a family. So as well as the main body, I also had to add a bunch of little crablings making a home inside its shell. For colours, I made the palette fairly pastel to imply its pearlescent nature, and the home itself is based off of shells, caravans, and that one camper van from the 60s. I also enjoyed the idea that unlike the other hermit crab mon, Crustle, this guy is speedy, so it rolls around on pearl wheels. Here we (laughs) we have the second one. Uh, So we we have second crustacean of the day, third fish, no, wait, fourth fish? We've had a lot of water types today. Oh, yeah, a lot of water types, wow. Fourth (laughs) water types in a row. This is Crabavan, the mobile home Pokemon. This would be the hardest Pokemon to model. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And anime. Just just a bit. Like, I thought it was going to be all simple, and then I got to the line art phase, and I was like, I should I should add children to this. <laughs> That's literally how human life is born. Ah, this is fine, but we should add children to this. <laughs> it was just the, the crab and the, the shell, and I was like, I mean, it's a home. What would you have in home? Pets. Ah, <gasps> babies. Mousehold, Dreepy, Dragapult, Kangaskhan, kind of. I don't know if the, the children would be involved in any kind of attack 
or if they're just kind of there for vibes. But um, <laughs> I, I think uh, the, the one on the left that's like looking out into into space is my favorite. The one at the very back is very shy. He's got his butt hanging out though. It looks like it would be really slow because it's a it's a hermit crab, but it's actually quite fast. You also literally used every single color. In the, in I like the colorful things. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going for a sort of pearlescent. Uh, color scheme and then True. I also wanted to make it like a darker version than the youngs like when um, creatures with shells grow older their shells tend to like harden and get a bit darker it could be a final boss in a game not gonna lie <laughs> not final final <laughs> boss but like the boss in that specific area yeah like a, like a regional boss in one yeah. of those like cute games that's like uh, like Kirby again like, yeah, yeah Kirby boss it, if it was a Kirby boss though it would throw its babies at you oh for sure <laughs> <laughs> for attacks wise, I was thinking it was just like charge, um, just cause vehicular manslaughter. Um, <laughs> I yeah, both of your Pokemon are vehicle Pokemon. Oh, true. Yeah, <laughs> I guess they are. I imagine if if you are fighting one of the little ones on its own, it would still have the gigantic shell, and so it would just kind of be peeking out of the top. <laughs> yeah, it just can't move because it doesn't have like the the manpower. It has the exact same defense, but like, like zero speed. Speed stat literally zero. <laughs> it does it doesn't get a turn. <laughs> it can't use moves that make contact. I guess the special attack would stay forty five. Yeah, it would be like zero attack. <laughs> zero attack, zero speed. Everything else stays the same. It always moves last. Yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. That's a fun gimmick, and it evolves into a normal Pokemon, so it's worth the grind or whatever. Yeah. Um Bielsel, you're next. Alrighty. So uh, I have another Zelda Pokemon, but this one is based on my favorite Zelda game, which is uh, Twilight Princess. I wanted to kind of do a Pokemon that's kind of like the opposite of Chubilant. For this Pokemon, I base it on the Shadow Beast from The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. This is actually a remake of my first Zelda Pokemon from 2019 and is what kickstarted my region. It was originally a made-up unknown symbol attached to the body of a shadow beast. And while it was always one of my most popular Fakemon, I really didn't want it to be associated with unknown because I felt like it deserved to be its own thing. While a shadow beast could be considered too abstract and scary to be a Pokemon, I feel like rendering it in my style and simplifying a lot of its features could alleviate that. This Pokemon is meant to be bizarre though, and I feel like we need more designs like that in actual Pokemon. I was also inspired by the Treasures of Ruin since those Pokemon are wielding dark artifacts, and this one is too. And I couldn't help but keep its iconic pose from the original. Whoa. Known. 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 <laughs> uh, we can get a jump scare of the Shadow Beast. <laughs> They're very, like, uh, yes. abstract I remember looking. those guys. Yeah. Oh, that's a neat looking dude. I do love the aesthetic of uh, Twilight Princess. It's got some pretty wild character designs. The ones with the with the air temple and they go like me 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 me. Oh, the Uku. The Uka. Yeah. Yeah, they're cool. They're so weird. I love them. This is not a Nintendo design. What the hell's going on? Yeah, you 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 think they wouldn't have done that, but they did. <laughs> oh, uh, look up the great fairy from that game. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> they just did that. Oh, they just good did lord. That. That's a huge contrast between that and, uh, and uh, Wind Waker. Oh, Especially yeah. with it coming out after. And it's funny because I thought like the ones in like uh, Breath of the Wild weren't that subtle. Cool. <laughs> Love seeing that. <laughs> but the oxymoron is actually blind eye because uh, oh. while its mask looks right. like an eye, it does not see. I learned so many oxymorons through this. <laughs> I was actually having arguments with people about what's an oxymoron. Because I was going to do freezer burnt. People were telling me that's not one. That's an oxymoron. Yeah, I know, that's, that's what I that said. totally counts. I was going to, I was about, that was the third <laughs> one. If I was to do three, that was the third one. Yeah, that was up there for me. Yeah, I love that it was an actual redesign. I love that. Your color choices are gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. I spent a lot of like, time, like, just looking at that type of stuff. I like, again, also the right amount of detail, like, right amount of stripes and tattoos. Not tattoos, but you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, that's like the fun part about this is like trying to, especially with Twilight Princess, it's a lot more of like a detailed, textured game. Yeah, this um, seems really fun trying to like oh, streamline the designs and make them work in yeah. Fakemon. It, uh, that's totally, I can understand why that would be fun. Because mm. sometimes when I'm even designing a Fakemon, like if it's based on a specific animal, sometimes I'll just straight up draw the animal like in realistically mm -hmm. and then slowly turn it into a cartoon. And it's Twilight type, which is a reimagined dark type. 
is a large lad. How does it eat? It does not. It does not eat, but it does consume. Its ability is kind of what they do in the game. So in the game, you can't leave one alive when you're fighting them. Because oh. if you do, the other one will revive them. Its ability is whenever it faints after three turns, it will revive again if you're still fighting. What? Wait, Just once, cool. though. I guess it would work on like a stall team. And does it revive with how much HP? Half? I, I said 33%, but... Okay, that's not bad. Okay. One more attack. I also, I do like the gradient on the tentacle. It looks mm. delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, people always want to eat my Pokemon that I make. <laughs> it's a common comment. So it's a very gummy texture. I'm here for it. <laughs> And at this point, might as well make it a legendary or like. It's mm. definitely a like powerful Pokemon. Yeah. It's meant to be pretty it's like strong. Like a like a Spiritomb. It's supposed to be like a late game Pokemon in a specific area. Like it'd be crazy if like you roll up to like the seventh gym and they have this Pokemon. <laughs> mm. <laughs> just a bunch of regular Pokemon, and then he just throws out that. <laughs> if you wiped out the sort of spindle wheel circle shape in the center of that mask and replaced it with a few dots you'd have a ghost type reggie yeah <laughs> basically all right my turn so there's one more pokemon for me to show you guys and just like i guess you guys so far the second one is more serious than the first one this one actually is the easiest to guess the oxymoron so i'm not going to tell you until you see it bramblite <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you think this guy what do you guy this guy what do you what do you what do you think it embodies <laughs> Uh, is he sharp as a bowling ball? Oh, that's a thing. That's a. I've never heard that. <laughs> that's heard funny. That ooh, 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 ooh. Is sense. it? Is it? That's something uh, Foghorn Leghorn says. Oh, I say, I say, you're sharp as a bowling ball. Nice boy, but as sharp as a bowling ball. Is it iron wool? It is steel wool. Steel wool. There we go. Oh, oh no, right. steel wool. No, I got the word wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I meant. <laughs> It's a ram, but with tangled metallic vines surrounding it. Some are straight up metal, while others are tough plants. It has very coarse wool that pokes out of the vines. That's the actual steel wool that grows on the Pokemon. The wool is technically cotton since it's a grass type. Its horns are made of bark. I'm refining it before adding the thorns and spikes that form on the flora. Now a darker, lifeless green covers its body. It's not vibrant. It represents harsher plants. But what's cool is that the reason why I did this is because I think oxymorons make for amazing Pokemon because the contrast, the contrast, and also there are a lot of Pokemon that like are the opposite of what they're based on. Like, what if I made a, a sheep, but it's not fluffy, you know? Like, that's a thing yeah. Pokemon always does. And it's, I think those are some of my favorite ones. Like, oh, like, for example, Buzzwole. Like, I love the f idea of a mosquito that is not tiny and wimpy, like a buff mosquito. That's hilarious. The vines are also like steel vines. How do you think it battles? By, you know, rolling around and hitting each other with their bodies <laughs> he looks like he's wearing one of those blow up sumo suits yeah yeah i imagine it, it battles by being put on the end of a stick and then <laughs> uh, having having it clobbered against it's a, it's a mace go go mixed with chestnut <laughs> i'm seeing uh oh god what's what's the mid stage quilladin Hopefully people like mine more than Quilladin, though. I like Quilladin, but... It's, a, it's one of those serious grass types. It's not one of those pretty grass types. That's why I love the grass type, because, you, again, you can have so much contrast in what a grass type looks like. It could be, like, the wrath, nature's wrath, or it could be a little flower. And if you didn't realize, the name is a combination of bramble, ram, and blight. I would like to see it walking, or <laughs> just, just waddling. How many legs does it use to walk? Oh, no, like two. two like it walks. Four. It's a bipedal Pokemon. Like, see that wool that's sticking out? That's not soft either. That's very cool. That's actually the steel wool. The the humans will collect that wool and use it as steel wool. So what does it look like when it's shorn? You can't. Like, you cannot <laughs> shear those vines. I do really like the shiny. He somehow looks significantly meaner in the shiny It looks like form, medieval. Obviously, the, the expression mm. obviously is exactly the same, but somehow he, he, looks he like is a... ready to cave in your skull. <laughs> he looks like a sea mine. Definitely supposed to look like a weapon. But what's funny, yeah, the shiny does fit in Zelda, honestly. Yeah, I know that's, yeah. that's why I like it. <laughs> that that thought had occurred to me as a touch of a <laughs> touch of the Lionel to that. If I punched it, my hand would break. Um, I didn't yes. expect you, you to that, fight it personally. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, you, you don't want to go pal world on this guy. You're not gonna. You're not. You're not gonna come out on top. <laughs> just get out the machine gun. Just like bullets start like popping Bouncing off back of it. at you. <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> 
Now, before moving on to our final guest's last Pokemon, for the first time ever, I asked my followers on Twitter to submit their own oxymoronic fake mon. If you want to participate in the next episode's fan submission section, follow me over there on Twitter. How about we highlight my personal favorite three? We finally have a bittersweet Pokemon that not only represents the oxymoron visually, but also personality-wise. It's a complete package with a very well-done progression. Good job, Chili. This elephant seal combined with Yankees and Onis, all while accounting for the battle scars that hyper-masculine seals and manatees get while duking it out is very clever, especially the nose becoming a pompadour. Tough love must be a fun oxymoron to create, and combining it with love-hate was a good idea, Jace Armstrong. And last but definitely not least, Zimli's tattle tweet and mutant nose, representing open secrets and deafening silence. Not only do they convey their oxymorons beautifully, the design themselves are flawless, full of personality and flair. The pirate attributes are seamless, and I can very much feel mutant noise's uh, silent glare and tattle tweet's patronizing snicker. Now make sure to stick till the very very end of the video because the next six minutes is literally the funniest finale to any video in the series. Here's Harry! Alright, so for the uh, final design... Snoopy? <laughs> it's just Charlie Brown again. <laughs> <gasps> oh! <laughs> Monkey! But if you want to take a guess at the oxymoron fool's gold. first, you can. That's not an oxymoron. <laughs> Dude looks like a fool and he's golden. What type is it? Is it steel? Uh... This is a normal type. Whoa! Oh. That's, not, that's not normal. So it's probably noise. It's noise is related. It, it's like deafening something? Deafening silence is one, but is that it? That is a good one. Deafening silence is a good one, but that is not the... That is a little <sighs> more abstract. I was very close to doing one based off of a one-man band. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to tell you? Eh? Yes, please. Yes, it is a one-man band. Yay! <laughs> nice. And uh, so from there, I kind of took, you know, those sort of toy symbol clapping monkeys and uh, sort of turned it into a single solid creature. So his hands are the symbols. The other way I decided to interpret one-man band is that like a one-man band, uh, he can do everything, which means he can be more than one type. Huh? So that okay, the normal type makes sense now. So Holy he can man. come in a fire form. Oh my god! Whoa! Whoa! And he can come in a water form, and he can come in a grass form. So he can do all the stuff. Wow, that's good. You did different poses for all of them. Oh my oh goodness! My god. And he can be electric type. Oh no! Oh, he does it all. He does and it. And ice. Oh my god, dude! Bro! And psychic. <laughs> How do you have the time for this? Please don't tell me you did every type. Did you do- No oh my bug. god! <laughs> oh my god. And ground. Are you and making us look bad go. on purpose? <laughs> you beat Moxie! flying. And oh fighting. Bro. And dark. And rock. And fairy. <laughs> and steel. <laughs> and finally dragon. So for anybody new, we have two rounds, so hopefully nobody made more than two Pokemon, right? <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you, Ron. Dude. <laughs> this is crazy. Bloody hell. So you're correct, I did not make three Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I am so happy I didn't do one man band, yours is way better than mine. So from his symbols, uh, by... Uh, clapping them together, uh, altering the vibrations in the way he claps his symbols, he can generate the different elemental energies and change his type. I don't know, something about... Like, you, you, uh, here's the thing, here's the thing. You know what that means? That now we're expecting you to do this every time. <laughs> you've, you've raised the bar. That's he probably it. doesn't want to do this ever again. This, oh, <laughs> that's it, this is his last four artist uh, video. Bye, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> No, you evicted a... from the island. My own hubris got me. <laughs> <laughs> when you just got like the grass one, I was like, oh, that's the last one. Okay, now I can say which one I like the best. <laughs> and then you did And then it just else. kept going. Just the reveal that there are multiple forms made me really like the fire one, but also like just the lighting of the fire one is really good. But then again, mm. like the grass one, color scheme wise, I love the most. Uh, mm. The electric one, I think, is my favorite, like art wise. I really like the, the crest and the like the head. It's on the ice type one. From, as soon as I decided it was going to be one man band, so well, if he's going to do everything, he's got to do everything. Yeah, and we questioned the normal type too. We were fools. Yeah, we're like, could, oh, this is the finale. Like, oh, okay then, sure, <laughs> right. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs>
what is the aura? Is that like uh, from coming from the steel one? Like, what is, how do you rationalize that one? It is as much as steel can take on an energy form. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. That's sort of it's just pure vibes. So this is monkey Arceus. Pretty much. I, I thought that was very clever. Uh, I was trying to figure out how it would go about changing its types, and I thought. Oh, here's a new idea. There's totally those, like, type plate things. Maybe it should hold that, and that would change its type. And then I looked it up, and I was like, oh, that's literally already the gimmick that is the point of those items. <laughs> Wait, oh, okay. Uh, why, why don't that we do discs just... instead, then? Oh, no. So it's protean, but with visual difference. Yes. And so it, it changes his type, and it changes he has an attack somewhat like Arceus does, that also changes type. He has a symbol crash attack that becomes the type uh, that he changes to. Simbobo. Simbobo. Simbobo? Where are you getting Simbobo? Simbobo. Oh, that's his name. <laughs> like, why is everybody saying Simbobo now? Am I, uh... <laughs> Simbobo. 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 His ears look like jammy dodges. What? Oh, I do like a jammy dodger. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> do you, do That's you the not thing have they those? reference in Doctor Who all the time that Americans don't oh, know. Oh, he what does. The hell it is. He doesn't like oh, Doctor great. Who. Don't call me out like that. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fair enough. Doctor Who's terrible, but hey, uh, less of that. You said that in front of me. <laughs> less of that. <laughs> Oh, those! There's, I love oh, those. Oh, that's little, so cute! Little sort of shortbready cookies with a drop of jam yeah, I love on the top. So, yeah, they're great. Shortbread cookies with raspberry in the middle. Oh, that's my favorite cookie. I, uh, I'm assuming you drew shinies for every single form, then. Oh, absolutely. Roll out the shinies. <laughs> Wait, no, oh I was I wasn't being serious. <laughs> no. What? What? Oh my god! What? What's the problem? Stop! Oh my god! <laughs> Stop! No! I, I, I don't see being what the issue is. Serious. <laughs> It's just like, it's just one Pokemon with its, its just shiny Simbobo, form. It's just Simbobo, guys. Like, you know, it's just Simbobo. What's the... It's what's, just, just Simbobo. What's the big deal? He said, all right, bet. Oh my god. Here's what's crazy. Now Moxie's gonna see this, and now he's gonna <laughs> wanna one-up you. He's gonna wanna beat your title. 36 monkeys. That's, 36 that's an awful lot of monkeys. all in a row. There's a lot of monkeys. <laughs> it's a barrel of monkeys. Next episode, we're gonna get 37 cat women. <laughs> 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 You're insane. Respectfully. Well, much obliged. Respectfully. To the people at home in our Discord, we'll, we'll say a joke in the Discord, and then <laughs> one minute la later, Harry has drawn that joke out. It's like, it's intimidating. Every time I go in here, I'm like, oh god. You know me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm the biggest, scariest guy here. We all know that. You are the final boss. He's a machine. It's a genius idea to put him last. It's clear that you, each of you guys have very... A unique thing going on, whether it be a separate style, a whole different project, or literally have the ability to draw 36 Pokemon in one sitting. Uh, these are very, these are some of the best in the business. So go check out the, these people's channel. Thank you guys for coming. Thank Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> I'm still just flummoxed by the monkeys. <laughs>